This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio B, your hosts, Dave McCann and Kristen Kozlowski. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play here in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Friday, April 8th. Happy Friday, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I'm Dave McCann, teamed up with a social media guru who understands how a simple idea can go viral, Kristen Kozlowski. Welcome. Thank you. Happy Friday. Again, once again, Jason Shepard yesterday. Good to be here with you. And Dave, who would have thought that a master spoop video would <laughs> run wild, like wildfire through some of these fan bases? It, uh, well, we found one. We, we got one, and it's certainly uh, come to life. It's got all kinds of attention. It, it really has. So let's take a look. Our good friend Bonnie Fuller tweeted out the following. Yeah. BYU Sports Nation is made possible by viewers like you. This was one of the good ones yesterday that uh, stood out. Boney does a nice job. Uh, so, look, in the event that you missed it, uh, let's watch it again this morning. Our goal is to hit 200,000 views. And you think, what, 200,000 views? Well, we're cruising that way uh, in a spoof of the Masters so cleverly written that a lot of folks missed the joke. Here it is. The dawn of a new Power Five day has finally arrived in Provo, Utah, offering an abundance a validation and celebration. And furthering a pattern of dominance and victory over the Conference of Champions. BYU football beating the Pac-12, a tradition unlike any other. If that doesn't get you ready for golf, I don't know what will. We thank everybody who's watched it. Uh, we're gonna we're shooting for 200,000 views. We're at 108,000 views already this morning. So if you missed it uh, or missed the fun in it all, we encourage you to keep watching it until you get it. Or call a friend or a helpline. But uh, there's a lot of comedy in there. The master spoof has been masterful. And uh, it's as good as at least Tiger Woods opening round, which was spectacular. So, again, we're shooting for 200,000 views. And uh, and there's humor throughout that thing. And if you're missing it, dang, you're missing a good one. So there you go. How about that? A shout out to everyone who put it together. Uh, a <laughs> little idea, looking for some attention, and thank you. You've given us just the attention we were hoping for. Here's the show lineup for today on this Friday. Will BYU be a top 25 offense over the next three seasons? A national writer believes that they will. A national writer is in studio with us tonight, Barry Trammell. He'll join us to talk about the future of the Big 12 as we launch into Friday. Question, will Tyler Algier be a top four running back in the draft? Some insight on that. And Carson Lundell here as he talks the Masters and working out with Mike Weir ahead of another big event for the men's golf team. With that done, let's bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Baseball beat Santa Clara 5-1 last night after a three-run third inning, and this RBI single from Brock Watkins in the fourth inning. Two balls, two strikes. Kitchen delivers. And a base hit through the four hole and into right field. They will send Reuter as the ball is bobbled. He will score from second base, and it's an RBI single for Brock Watkins. Was that uh, Jack Buck on the call or was that Jason Shepard? Nice job, Chef. Yes, Shepard. Same two teams tonight, 8 Eastern. It'll be Dave McCann, Gary Scheide on the call on BYU app and BYU radio. Softball hosts LMU today in a doubleheader over at Miller Park. Coverage of the game, the first game, that starts at 7 Eastern on BYU TV and on the app. These are the best two teams in the WCC with your attention tonight. Men's volleyball is on the road to face 12th ranked Stanford today and tomorrow. Tonight's match begins at 10 Eastern on the Pac 12 network. BYU leads the all time series 40 to 22. They're rebuilding. It'll be a big one to steal a match or two in this series. Nationally ranked track and field competes this weekend at the Sun Angel Classic in Tempe, Arizona, and at the Aggie Invitational at Utah State tomorrow in Logan. 
Speaking of track and field, runner Carmen Alder broke a 32-year-old Ecuadorian record in the 1500 meter. The record she broke, Dave, was previously set by her mother, Janeth, in 1980. Wow, that's outstanding. Something to discuss at Thanksgiving. Women's tennis beat San Francisco 4-3. Cougars host Santa Clara tomorrow afternoon at 2 Eastern. Men's tennis hits the road by the Bay this weekend to face San Francisco today and Santa Clara tomorrow. And women's soccer wraps up their spring schedule tomorrow at Haas Field as they host two matches, Utah Valley's first at noon here local time and then Southern Utah at four local time. Cougars are 7-0-1 in the spring, including 3-0-1 against that Pac-12. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. We love football. It's a year-round sport here on campus. ESPN senior writer Adam Rittenberg released a college football projection article looking ahead at the best offenses over the next three years. He's got the Cougars ranked 14th on his projections, fourth best in the Big 12, citing Jaron Hall's improvement and the Cougar offensive line as the main reasons. Number 14, is that too high or too low? I think it's right about where I expected. Yeah. You know, as we talked about this and looked at this, I think there's two areas that stand out. Number one, the offensive coordinator. Um, they're finally getting comfortable with him, I think, and what he expects from his offensive players, getting comfortable with plays, things like that. He's got Jaron Hall, who's an experienced guy who's been with him throughout the entire time. And so yeah. he comes in with that leadership, very versatile guy. As long as he can stay healthy, I think Jaron Hall it really can lead them to that next level. And he might also be thinking that Hall, who's a junior, is going to play for two more seasons. Sure. We tend to believe that if he has a great season this year with his age and, and what he wants to do with the NFL, that he will uh, be out of here and take his uh, shot at the NFL draft and, and getting a job playing football. But uh, there are a lot of numbers that his projections are based on, and BYU has been improving certainly with the Zach Wilson year, and then last year they were spectacular as well. Uh, you know, injuries and... and uh, especially to Hall there toward the end of the season, uh, kind of left BYU with a bad taste in their mouth coming out of that bowl game. But as we saw during spring camp with Hall completely healthy, uh, optimism is sky high. And here you see some of the numbers used by pro football focus to rank the offense. Well, and one of the things that really I think is so important, Dave, is to allow Jaron Hall to do what he does, you have to have the front line that they have. And coming back this next season, you got 10 guys return with starting experience. The one that you really lose is James Empey, but Connor Pay was one that stepped in and really didn't have a letdown when he did go out, right. got a lot of reps. So not missing a ton there, but they're strong, they're big, they're physical, and, and just very stacked this year to allow a player who's so dynamic like, like Hall to go to work. We've seen it uh, in a number of programs. If you are stout up front, on the offensive line and the defensive line. You have a chance to win all of your games. You don't win them all. It's hard to go undefeated. Uh, but you have a chance to win each game if you can control the line of scrimmage. Uh, an area where BYU hasn't done so well against Utah over the years has been at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. That's where they won the game last September was at the line of scrimmage, running the ball and stopping the run. It opens up everything. Yeah, It really does. You have to have that front line to start. I think the one question mark we were talking about is the run game. Losing Algier, how's that going to affect them? Who's going to step up, take that? Over 1,600 rushing yards last year, 5.8 yards per carry. That's a loss. That's a question mark that I think in the offense that, that fans and players, I think, need to figure out. Yeah, and that puts the spotlight on Chris Brooks, who's transferred in from Cal. Um, can he be that guy? Can he stay healthy? He's had injuries over his career as well, and he was part of a group of runners at Cal. Uh, even though he was their leading rusher, um, he wasn't their every down back, but he did enough out of the backfield. And he caught enough passes out of the backfield where Aaron Roderick said, uh, yeah, you and this offense – this can be spectacular. Um, and it gives BYU a different wrinkle. He's a little bit bigger than Algier. Um, uh, for a long time, Lapini Katoa would come in on a passing situation and, and Algier would leave. Chris Brooks gives you the option of just leaving him in. You know, unless he's dead tired, you leave him in on a, on a running – on third and two is not a passing down necessarily because the same running back is in the game. Sometimes it tips your hand when Katoa is coming in or someone else is coming in. That means they're going to throw the ball on third down. So he, he gives a little bit of a, uh, a, 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 a change to the offense. Um, he had a great spring. Um, again, he's going to run behind that big offensive line like, uh, like you mentioned. And, and Katoa and uh, – 
Rapati and McChesney and, and all those guys will also be running behind those guys. But you got to fill the shoes of a guy who's the right. all-time single season but We're leader. trending in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, you look at the last two years, 21-4, and 84% winning percentage. The depth of talent is starting to increase in terms of volume. And that's what you have to have going into the Big 12. That, that talent has to get better and get deeper. And it's not a matter of bringing in talent. BYU has been able to bring in the talent. Is there enough depth of talent? One thing that's cool about that offensive line, and, and I guess it's kind of a cool thought, but, but it's a special challenge for Hall, and we talked to him about it during spring practice, is they're tall. Yes. And so and on Hall 6-1, he backs up. He's got to find a lane. Now, they're, they're, the defensive line also has to find Hall, but uh, you'll see him moving around so that he can see Puka Nakua, Gunnar right. Romney, Dallin Holker, Keanu Hill, all those guys running downfield. And so, you know, you don't have a 6'7 quarterback lining up behind a, a line that's six six and taller. Uh, and so you're going to see Hall moving around a bit, which feeds his skill strength. And it also feeds Conover and Fennigan, the guys that are, that are backing him up. But the size of the line gives a challenge to the defense, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's a challenge for the quarterback who's got to be – who's got to find a way to find his guys without staring at the back of a giant helmet who's protecting him. I think he has enough experience. He has enough leadership he's bringing to the table, enough versatility to get the job done. And then you combine that, like we talked about, with that front line that will protect him, give him a little bit extra time to find those guys. I, I really think that 14th pick is right, right about where we, I would anticipate. 14th best offense over the next three years in college football. Uh, and there were three teams currently in the Big 12 that were ranked ahead of them, Oklahoma, Texas, and Central Florida, which will also be a newcomer uh, in that group. So uh, that, that's good. That's good. That's good national perception for a team that uh, has won 10 games uh, last year and, and uh, again, double-digit wins the year before. And moving forward, joining a big league competition level is going to get tougher. Absolutely. Uh, so the offense has to get better. And in this one Ryder's opinion from ESPN, he sees that happening. Our question of the day today is what do you see from BYU's offense that makes you confident the Cougars will be a top 25 unit over the next three years? Let's hear from you at BYU SN in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. All right, our first response, Shay Lornick on Twitter, Depth. Kalani and co. were already good recruiters, but the Big 12 announcement is helping add the depth we'll need for consistent top 25 rankings. You hit on that a little bit. You've got you to get up front, and then number two guy, number three guy, they can't be too far behind. Well, if you look at the recruiting class, too, I think, Dave, that depth is being added to in the right direction. We go from 77th in 2021 to 55th in 2022, and it's projected even higher in 2023. It, they're continuing to bring in that talent at the depth level. Second response, Blaine Swallow on Instagram, writing, the dominance and depth of the offensive line. It starts in the trenches, and BYU has some great offensive linemen and look like they will be for years to come. And uh, the depth on that line uh, not just for the coming season, uh, for the coming seasons. Looks pretty good. It's old school BYU. It you is. Know. Ty Detmer had a huge offensive line. He was able to win the Heisman Trophy behind it. It's helpful. For it sure. is. Uh, so go to hashtag BYUSN on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Let's get some of your opinions on that, and we will share them as we move through the program today. Coming up, what is the greatest BYU comeback story as we all marvel at Tiger Woods? I marveled yesterday. He had a great we did. round. did. One under. Longtime columnist for the Oklahoman, Barry Trammell, joins us next. We'll ask him what's next for the Big 12 as Bob Bowlesby steps down and much more. This is BYU Sports Nation. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. 
Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Now this is entertainment. Kind people working hard. <sighs> Those power tools really stress me out. Back in my day, we didn't have power tools. We had sticks, stones, and uh, polio. Great. Now I'm thinking about polio. I've had it three times. <coughs> oh no. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It's a doubleheader for BYU softball today as they join, as they host LMU in a matchup of the top two WCC contenders. You can watch the games live on BYU TV and the app beginning at 7 Eastern. We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. Dave McCann alongside Kristen Kozlowski. Our pleasure to welcome Barry Trammell from the Oklahoman in town. Checking out Provo for the very first time. Welcome. Well, thanks, guys. I've been uh, been here two two days in Provo and three days in Utah, and really enjoyed it. What do you think? What what about Provo? What's how different is Provo from the great state of Oklahoma? Um, you got these big rock things that go high <laughs> into the sky, and I'm trying to figure out what they are. Uh, we don't have mountains like this in Oklahoma, so uh, it's fun, and the setting is just gorgeous. You know, I've seen you know Lavelle Edwards Stadium from television and the great view and the setting. But to be here and drive through the valley and, you know, drive around town, it's, it's uh, just a fabulous setting. You're here with your wife and uh, able to see some of those sites. We did want to ask you, though, some of the big news in the conference is a new commissioner. So with Bob Bowlesley being uh, released or stepping down, what is your take on that and, and how that all proceeded? Well, you know, Bob's been, Bob's 70 years old. He's been on the job 10 years and it's been a tumultuous 10 years. Um, you know, just in the last two years, we've had COVID hit and, you know, decimate everyone's athletic budget, wiped out uh, a uh, virtual year of, of, uh, of normalcy in terms of scheduling and those things. And on top of that, Oklahoma and Texas, you know, last summer, you know, uh, hightailed out of the conference or say they're going to and really put the Big 12 in risk and um, for poaching and perhaps even dissolution. So uh, Bowlesby did a great job putting it back together, you know, getting people rallied, saying, hey, we can, we can not only survive, we can prosper. Got four great candidates. Um, not exactly the four I would have picked, but BYU has always been at the top of my list for, right. for coming into the Big 12. And, um, you know, Cincinnati is a, a good addition. Central Florida is a good addition. Uh, Houston's going to be good. So it's going to be great. And, um, but he, he was able to sort of rally that around. And then, uh, you know, now he's 70, and he's he said, I've got three years left on my contract, and I'm not going to extend it past then. And he told the presidents in, the, in recent weeks, you know, this is going to be it for me. If you want to plan for the future, now is the time to start talking about it. And they just came to the decision, let's just start looking for a, a successor. And he may be, you know, they may find it in a month. They might, may find it in two years. But he's going to be around to help the transition. What kind of person do they need heading into a new TV deal? Uh, Oklahoma and Texas leaving. Will they leave earlier if there's a commissioner a little more friendly and less offended on how it all shook down? What, what do you see the next two years for this new commissioner and then beyond? Well, the number one thing for any commissioner is, is to be savvy with the media rights. You know, the Big 12 uh, contract comes up in 24 They'll, going forward, you know, a vital interest to BYU and everybody else is, is how that goes down. It's a new age. You guys know more about television than I do, but it's a new age with the streaming, with uh, a lot of different new people coming in. You know, Amazon is, is broadcasting the NFL now, right. so, you know, anything could happen. But uh, being very aware and, and uh, proactive on that front is number one. And number two is being... Uh, you know, sort of a, a facilitator among the schools, keeping people together. Uh, we thought Bowlesby was doing that 
Um, you know, the OU Texas thing blindsided him as much as everybody. People say, uh, you know, it's his job to know OU and Texas were leaving. And uh, that's true. It was also sort of my job to know it, and I didn't know it, so I'm not going to be too hard on him. Right. So, uh, you know, it, it, was a, it, was a tough, it was a tough two years, tough ten years, and I think overall he's done a very good job. He's, the Big 12 is, is in good shape, and that hasn't, wasn't the truth ten years ago when he took over. Uh, the Big 12 is not as financially strong or as status strong as the SEC or the Big 10, but it's at least on par with the Pac-12 and, uh, and the ACC. And that would have been hard to believe 10 years ago. So he deserves a lot of credit for that. He's 70. He's got 10 grandkids. He said the other day he's never taken more than one week off at a time wow. in his life. So he's, he's ready to do that. He's yeah. due, for sure. Uh, how do you like the new Big 12? And you've always been an advocate for BYU. But what's your take on the teams coming in and the changes? Well, I like it uh, because of a couple of things. One, the variety. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of similarities between Brigham Young and the University of Houston. Um, but variety is the spice of life. I, I sort of enjoy that. Uh, and and, and it, it seems like somebody's looking out for the Big 12 because just in the last year or two, I mean, you look at Cincinnati made the college football playoff. Yeah. Houston made the Final Four and almost made it again. Um, Brigham Young's with the football renaissance, you know, had two great years in a row. And uh, Kalani seems to really have things on the upswing. So it's perfect timing. And... Uh, the thing I like about it on the football side is I had this discussion with Mike Gundy the other day, and he said we we're talking about divisional play and how we split the divisions. He said, I, th I just want it to be fair. I want the same amount of good teams in each division. I said, well, Mike, who are going to be the good teams? I mean, we don't know who's going to be dominant. Right. Well, you know, Alabama is not in the Big 12, you know, and – is it, is it going to be Oklahoma State and Baylor who actually played for the Big 12 title? Is it going to be Cincinnati and Brigham Young who are going to be the best teams? We don't really know. And to me, that's exciting because college football often is plagued by sameness. Yeah. Same teams year after year win the conferences. You know, and, and Oklahoma won six in a row in the Big 12. Clemson run, won six in a row in the ACC. Uh, Ohio State dominates the, the Big 10. Alabama generally dominates the SEC. Uh, and Pac-12 has been about the only place where you find much parity. I think parity is going to be great. And if, if we go into every season not knowing who's going to win the league, that's a good thing. You bet. Barry Trammell from the Oklahoma Outstanding Writer. Uh, do you really believe that when the Big 12 schedule comes out in October, which will include BYU and the three new teams, that Texas and Oklahoma will still be in that? Yes. I actually think no, I, Texas wants to go yesterday. Right. Texas is ready to go. Texas is different than the rest of us. They got the money to just write a check and do whatever they want to. Uh, the rest of the world's not that way. Certainly Oklahoma's not that way. You know, they, just like everybody else, they took a big hit in COVID. Yeah. Uh, 20 or so, $25 million budget deficit because of COVID. So it's not, you know, despite their incredible tradition, despite their incredible success, they don't have massive piles of cash laying around. So they're not ready to write an $80 million, you know, ca cashier's check. So uh, on top of that, Lincoln Riley up and bolted for Southern Cal. People got mad at him, uh, to which I said, you know, you guys left Big 12 and bolted. Why can't Lincoln Riley, you know, bolt? I saw his house. And it made enough yeah. sense to well, me. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> if he only had a view, if he, if he just had a view. Right. But, um, but Lincoln Riley's out. Brent Venables is in. And, uh, OU, frankly, OU football is undergoing a culture change. Right. Uh, they not. They may not try to win a bunch of Heisman trophies with their quarterback, but I think they're going to try to start tackling people. And uh, it's going to take Brent Venables a, a few years to get this new defensive mentality set. I think OU is okay with staying in the Big 12 for another couple, three years until Brent gets his program up and running and is more SEC, you know, level. So I think I think you'll see the Sooners and the Longhorns in 23 and probably 24. Good. So Good. I, uh, I think uh, the masterminds at the Big 12 will determine what's the toughest schedule they could give OU in Texas. And if that includes a trip to Provo, they'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to Provo. Good. You mentioned Mike Gunny just a, a few moments ago as we were talking about that. And then Texas, Oklahoma leaving eventually. We're not sure when to the SEC. But what are your thoughts? Gundy brought up that there might be more, more expansion. What's your thoughts on the expansion of more? Yeah, I, I actually was intrigued by that because I really hadn't heard that other than Bob Bowlesby mentioned it 
in passing when uh, when the four new schools were uh, uh, introduced in September. And he said, you know, eventually we could expand. I hadn't heard any follow-up on that, and then Gundy brings it out of the blue. I wouldn't put a ton of, of uh, stock in that because while Gundy, Gundy is fascinating and interesting, he generally just talks off the top of his head. He's not really an insider. He doesn't want to be. He just sometimes just talks. But if the Big 12 did go to 14, the, the one issue for me is I can find them a 13th team. Doesn't take me very long. I can't find the 14th. I think Boise State would be a really good addition to the Big 12. I don't know who the 14th team would be. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know another school that's uh, – of course, there's not any Brigham Youngs out there left on the, on the market um, or, or even a Cincinnati or Central, or Central Florida. But, you know, I like B Boise State's potential, but beyond that, to me, it's – I don't see it. Considering where BYU is now in moving into the Big 12, and go back 10 years, 11 years, when they left the Mountain West to become independent, back then did you think they were doing the right thing? And now over the long term with the result they're getting, did they do the right thing? I, I was curious about it uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago when it happened. Um, I sort of – I sort of understand BYU's mission and and you know how BYU is so different from any other school. So I under I didn't I didn't pass judgment. I just I wondered what the play was. It's turned out to be uh, a, a, an excellent move. Uh, I know it was also uh, troubled. I mean I know it was it created some rocky situations. I know it's not ideal, um, but I also know that you know the the Mountain West then and. The Mountain West, frankly, has has sort of found its footing a little bit in this 10 years and, and has done better. But the Mountain West, especially with Utah leaving, was not a good – that was not a good uh, situation for BYU. I understood that. Independence is not, is not ideal. Nobody really wants to be independent other than Notre Dame. Um, in the old days, all kinds of people were independent. But it's not really viable today and – uh, Brigham, I tell you, Brigham Young finding or landing in the West Coast Conference for its other sports. Huge. To me, that was the key yeah. more than football. Because if you got a sixty-five thousand seat stadium and you fill it in football, you know some things go up, some things go down, but you're going to be okay. But those other sports and the West Coast Conference has actually gotten really, you know, fairly prominent on that level with Gonzaga basketball and a lot of a lot of the other sports. So. To me, the WCC is is what really sort of made this thing salvageable for BYU sports over the last decade. And and like I said, in the in the ten years, Brigham Young's done very well. You know, uh, Kalani's been you know such a uh, a great thing for BYU. I got to meet him for the first time yesterday. What'd you think? I was well. Guy. I've been impressed with him before. Liked him just <laughs> on the television, but you know, blown away uh, by his authentic authenticity. Um, his humanity uh, just seems to be the you know the real deal. And, you know anybody can fool you, but if if Kalani ends up fooling me, I'll be surprised. Now over the next handful of years, you mentioned this is your first trip to Provo, and we can finish up on this one. Uh, uh, we're gonna have a lot of Big 12 fans come to Provo for the very first time, uh, just like you. What uh, what do they have in store? What do you anticipate uh, folks following their team to Provo for the very first time and and taking a look around and going? Uh, we're really glad they're in the league, or or what? Well, th people are going to be thrilled. Um, you know, I was telling the guys the other day, uh, in the old Big 12, we had a mountain town, Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. And everybody liked going to Boulder because it was so different, and it was a cool setting, and Folsom Fields, a historic old stadium set up against a hill. And then Colorado left. A year later, we get West Virginia, so we got our mountain fix. Now we're going to have two mountain towns. We're going to have two mountain settings. Uh, it's different, you know, that's the Appalachians over there. And now uh, coming to the Rockies, it's just a glorious setting. When people, uh, I assume they'll fly into Salt Lake and, and drive, uh, drive down, it's going to be, it's going to be great. And uh, they're going to be stunned at, uh, at Provo and the setting. You know, we, we see it on television, but, you know, the, uh, uh, the mountains uh, at, overlooking Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And I tell you, I think they're going to be, they're going to be thrilled with the atmosphere and, you know, one of the things about BYU I appreciate is you sort of know what you're going to get with the fans. Um, you know, I've never been to a BYU home game, but I'm pretty sure I could bring my 
you know, my nine-year-old granddaughter and not really have to worry about too yep. much. Uh, I'll be going to Auburn, Alabama here soon. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to take my nine-year-old granddaughter to Auburn, <laughs> Alabama, if you know what I mean. So yeah. I think people are going to really enjoy it and enjoy the environment and the culture. Um, you know, uh, somebody somebody on campus yesterday, uh, or, or maybe somebody in town told me, you know, we don't have a ton of religious schools in the Big 12. Baylor, um, TCU even, isn't really a right. religious school anymore. Uh, but we do have a lot of religious people. Um, and it's sort of what Oklahoma and Texas sort of hangs its hat on. So I think they're going to feel comfortable when they come here, and I think they're going to enjoy the football and um, all the other sports that Brigham Young uh, uh, supplies. And like I said, it's just the setting is so different. You know, when, when West Virginia got in, we're goofy. We don't know anything about geography. We didn't even know you flew into Pittsburgh to get to West Virginia. We didn't even know Pittsburgh was a great city. Now, if, if you've never been to Pittsburgh, it's breathtaking. And going to Pittsburgh is fabulous. So going to West Virginia is a highlight for a lot of Big 12 fans. Flying to Pittsburgh, enjoy the city, drive down the mountains to, to Morgantown. I think the same thing's going to happen with BYU. Once you put uh, your weekend visit down on paper, where can folks find it and read about it? Well, I'm at the Oklahoman.com, and um, I'm going to do a series on Brigham Young. Don't have it scheduled. It won't be this coming week, but eventually. But I also write a travel blog everywhere I go, and um, I've had, I've gotten two posted already on on Salt Lake. Uh, got to sit down and write my first Provo, but I'll have two or three on Provo. So Oklahoman.com, and uh, you can you know try to keep up with the Big 12 as as much as possible. But like I said. I'm no expert. I didn't even see OU in Texas coming. Look, Bob Bowlesby on his visit here was presented with a cougar tail and couldn't finish it. You don't, there's no pressure. You don't have to finish that thing either. But uh, I imagine that might be on your menu before the day is done. Yes. Uh, good luck with you that. Try one. I'll, I will do it. Uh, will Barry do it. Trammell, the Oklahoman. Thank you. And uh, again, welcome to Provo. And we'll see you back here in uh, a season or two. Hopefully in 23. Yes, you got it. Yes. Well, coming up, golf is on everyone's mind with the Masters, but BYU golfer Carson Mundell is focused on his own game. And will Tyler Algier be a top four running back in this year's NFL draft? A new report out today. We'll talk about this is BYU Sports Nation. BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with a free BYU TV app. I like it. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Welcome back. She's Kristen. I'm Dave. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. All right, let's whip it. 
Cougar Whip Around, presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. The Athletics' Dane Brugler lists Tyler Algier as the fourth best available running back in the NFL draft. Will Algier be the fourth back off the board at the NFL draft? I, I love what he's done. I like the stat that he's put out in the rankings right behind a back from Michigan State, Iowa State, and Texas A&M. That play against Arizona State shows me Algier's got the speed, the heart, the toughness to get into a uh, nice draft selection somewhere in the top four rounds. So this is great momentum for Tyler. Uh, projected to be in the third or fourth round. I agree with that. I think he's going to be just above James Cook. They have him right now, Georgia. And I, I, I think he's versatile enough. I think he's strong enough, powerful enough, and he'll be right there. Gonzaga's Drew Timmy announces his entrance into the NBA draft. Is this a reason to be uh, excited for BYU's final WCC season? Excited for BYU fans, for sure. He averaged 21.5 points per game against BYU, and so they do not want to play Timmy anymore. This is an exciting time. I think, obviously, Gonzaga is going to replace him pretty quickly, I anticipate. Last year, he made 19 of 24 shots against BYU. So, yeah, and he can take Chet Holmgren with him. They'll, uh, <laughs> they'll reload as they always do, but these two might be just a little bit tougher to replace for Gonzaga. Absolutely. After a series opening, 5-1 to one win over Santa Clara, what's the chance? the baseball team sweeps the weekend series against the Broncos. Well, the Cougars are 0-2 in series in the league, so a chance tonight to win the series, that's priority. So just win tonight, and then we'll deal with tomorrow Okay. Tomorrow. Dave, don't go coach It's like that me. Bob Seger song we got tonight. Yeah. Don't don't coach talk on me. They're going to sweep <laughs> the series. We're going with BYU on this one. Love your attitude. We'll see you tonight on the call. This is a big one for them. Across the field. Violet Zavodnik leading the WCC with 35 runs batted in. The over-under 2.5 RBI for Zavodnik tonight as BYU hosts LMU and the league's best pitcher. Well, she leads the league in home runs, RBI. Batting average, although she's going against one of the best pitchers in the league, right. if not the best pitcher in Jenna Perez from LMU. So power versus power. I think I'm going to go with BYU power in this one, and I think that she's going to be over. Zavodnik learns as she goes along. So her first two at-bats might not yeah. go so great, but before she's done, her bat will do the talking, and I agree. Zavodnik's going to have a big series in the biggest, what might be the biggest series in the entire WCC, and it comes real early yeah. in league play. It'll be a tough one. Tiger Woods returned for his first competitive round of golf to the Masters yesterday after 17 months after his car accident and rehab to shoot one under par for his opening round. What's the best BYU comeback story you can think of? He was fun to watch yes. and, and awesome and hard to believe he hadn't been in a competitive tournament for so long and shows up and shoots one under par at the Masters. Um, and that got us thinking. We had a pretty good conversation. But the Taysom Hill jumps off the page Always, here for right? me because he had three comebacks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and he, he just kept coming back. But there are others. Cassidy, Cassidy Smith, goalie for the women's soccer team. Phenomenal story. And women's hoops got a long history right. of comeback players. I do a lot with the women's side. Yeah. And so Haley Hall Steed was the first one I thought of. She's the assist leader at BYU and sixth year senior by the time she was done. That was without the COVID freebie eligibility year. Hey, and Kyle Collinsworth had to come back from an ACL. And all he hit, did was get uh, double doubles, double, double sometimes triple doubles. Yes. Uh, and the list could go on and on as you stop and think about the BYU Cougars that have had to come back from injuries. Um, congrats to Tiger and congrats to all those Cougars who kept battling. Coming up, rise and shout to advancing to the finals and opening day rosters. And Carson Lundell is going to join us in studio. What did he learn from Mike Weir as Weir prepared for the Masters? Weir has a green jacket. Uh, Carson did not wear a jacket today. We'll talk about that as well. As BYU Sports Nation continues. There he is. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown.
I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. On the next relative race, hearts are heavy with the elimination of Team Green. And the competitive pressure causes go, go, go. our remaining teams to crumble. Go, go, go! Wait, go. But with the grace of a golden ticket, Angie finally meets the relative she's always wanted. Oh. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball looks to make it two in a row against WCC foe Santa Clara. Dave McCann, Gary Scheide, and Jason Shepard will have the call at 8 Eastern. Watch live on the BYU TV app or listen to the call with Greg Rubel on BYU Radio. Friday night at Miller Park's Tough to Beat. We'll see you on the app a bit later today. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. Cougar senior golfer Carson Lundell has joined us. We've had a great show today, and look, we're just going to keep the ball rolling. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Have you been watching the Masters as a, as a collegiate golfer? How much <laughs> yeah. time do you spend watching professional golf? As much as, you, as much as I possibly can. It was kind of tough, though, yesterday because we're preparing for, right. really for a tournament. So it's hard to balance watching it and, and getting, getting some work done. Is it like with basketball that uh, everyone on the golf team thinks they're going to the tour NBA and every basketball player thinks they're going to the NBA. Every football player thinks they got a shot at the NFL. Your golf team is everyone planning on a professional career, whether it happens or not. Yeah, I I think to to yeah. an extent, you know, that's everyone's dream. It's everyone's you know top goal. Um, and yeah, I mean, every, everybody dreams of playing on the PGA Tour and and playing professionally and making it a career. So as you watch the Masters this weekend, are you more of a fan or are you a student of the game and, and watching some of your favorite players studying what they're doing? Yeah, that's a great question. A little bit of both. I mean, it's it's hard not to just watch Tiger. Yeah. I mean, go yeah. to those feature groups. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but no, it's, I mean, a, a little bit of both. You know, you love to see good shots, but you also appreciate how they're played and, you know, kind of the thought process behind those shots. When you're watching Tiger, are you studying just that? Okay, he's in the bunker. Here's how he gets out of the bunker as opposed to someone like me who's just going, hey, that's Tiger I'm watching. Yeah, yeah, actually, I uh, I think it was during the practice round on Wednesday. Um, Tiger and JT were, were in the bunkers, and I was actually, yeah, I was, I was watching them, and actually yesterday I was like, all right, how do I, how do I be exactly like Tiger from here? <laughs> but, no, there's, there, there's a lot to learn, you know, watching the Masters and watching the best in the world do it, so. All right, let's talk about your game a little bit. Last weekend, Palo Alto, you had mm -hmm. two 66s in the first two rounds. Another top 10 finish, your fourth of the season. So how has this season been going for you? Kind of sum it up in, in how you felt about your game. Yeah, yeah. Um, to be honest, kind of the, the beginning of the year, I really struggled. And, you know, I was able to put together good scores and, um, you know, just kind of, you know, gamed it around. And But I, but I really didn't feel comfortable. Um, towards the start of this season, I've been feeling a lot better. I've been able to figure out some some little tweaks in my swing and, and my short game and. Uh, at Stanford, yeah, I played great. I played great. I, I, uh, I think I was one back going into the final round, and you know, it just comes down to the putter. And I didn't make enough putts to, to uh, you know, win. But it was nice to get back in contention and give myself an opportunity. This, so. this picture here, you hit this one 900 yards, right? That, <laughs> that, that shot, something like that. So yeah. you watch Tiger in the bunker on the Golf Channel next week on the Golf Channel. You have an opportunity to play. Yes. On national TV in the Western Intercollegiate. Tell us about that opportunity. Yeah, no, that's like the coolest thing ever. Um, last year, we, we were lucky enough to, to play in that tournament and, and get some good coverage on the Golf Channel. So it was really cool. Um, it's just a great experience. It's a, at, you know, Pasa Tiempo is a championship golf course and a phenomenal test. And, um, you know, this, this year we've got, you know, a stacked field and, you know, we just got to be ready. It's one thing to play at Riverside over here yeah. and not be on TV. When you know you're on national TV, uh, how do you block that out as such a young competitor? Yeah, no, it's, I think it's a lot easier said than done. 
you know, when the cameras all come out and are right on you, it's, you know, you're a little shocked because they get so close. Um, but after a few holes, you know, you just kind of get used to it and try not to think about it very much. And I mean, then you just kind of get into a groove and, you know, get rolling. So maybe some of that experience helping, right? You're a, you're a senior with the opportunity mm-hmm. to come back next year. And you said you've already made that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Planning on coming on back. That, and what, know. what went into making that decision for you? Um, it just makes sense. You know, I, all across the boards, I won't graduate until next spring anyways. And, you know, college golf is, you know, in my opinion, the best thing out there. And, yet, you know, to have an opportunity to come back and, you know, play one more year and, you know, be around Coach Brockbank and Coach Miller and Coach Summer Hayes, who we just added on, which has been amazing. Um, I just think it's a great opportunity. Yeah, I would think back. of all the sports, um, practicing on a golf course, <laughs> competing on a golf course that's living the dream the, the football guys have guys hitting them across the middle basketball's banging down low with the elbows and everything soccer's physical everything but golf yeah you should do that as long as you can you know especially at the collegiate level because i think i think you've got the sweetest gig on campus yeah i'd i'd have to agree <laughs> i'd have to agree with that <laughs> uh what do you think about the team's chances as as we move forward teams playing good Coming off a good week, you coming off an individual good week. What about BYU golf? You got to go way back to the first national championship with Carl Tucker yeah. a, as the head coach. Um, been a long time since then. What, where's the team? Where's the program heading in toward the last part of the season? Yeah, yeah. You know, we're actually we're we're playing really well right now. We we had a great showing at Stanford. Again, everyone just kind of struggled that final round, but you know, we with with a you know if we were able to play a good round that final round, we would have had a great chance to win the tournament, and that's one of the biggest tournaments we play in all year. Um, so yeah, I think we're all really excited. We've had you know great qualifying rounds the last two qualifiers, and uh, you know I think everyone's just kind of starting to kick things into gear and and, uh, you know, kind of get, get getting ready to, to make some noise. So hopefully we can we can play well. We mentioned Tiger in the mm-hmm. Masters this weekend, but also a, a familiar one here at BYU is Mike Weir. And then you had the opportunity, we heard, to work out with him recently to, as he prepared for the Masters. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was it was so cool. I've played with Mike a few times, probably, you know, seven, eight times. But uh, How many this, times did you beat him? Um, Be honest. I don't know. Live TV. I don't know. I got him this last time, but I don't <laughs> nice. think he don't was. remember those. As yeah. long as you got him once. I don't think he was too too concerned because he was, he was preparing for Augusta. Yeah. But right. Yeah, it was. I mean, it, th- this time was really, really cool because he was preparing for Augusta. And, uh, you know, we walked Riverside and I was just able to kind of pick his pick his brain for a good four hours. And, you know, he was totally cool about it. You know, it's just an open book wanting to, you know, share his experiences and and give me advice. And it was like, I mean, it was the coolest thing. I saw an interview he was on with uh, a couple other former uh, Masters champs the other day on the Golf Channel, I think it was. And and uh, one had a glass of wine, one had a glass of wine, and over here was a glass of water. And I, it just kind of stood out to me. Uh, and I thought, what a, what a representative that Mike is at BYU uh, for all these years uh, and, and winning that green jacket. And so an opportunity to golf with a guy that, that, uh, that not only won it, but has maintained uh, such a great example of what BYU represents, I would think was a pretty cool afternoon for you. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And like I said, he's totally cool. And he's, I mean, he's he's a great friend. And, you know, after the round, he, you know, it's just so cool. He's, you know, just tells me any questions you ever have, you know, please call me. And so yeah, he's, he's, he's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Excellent that's mentor. cool. We, we mentioned Tiger, we mentioned Mike. What are some of the other players you're looking forward to watching, continuing to watch this weekend that you've idolized as you've grown up? Yeah, um, I mean, it's tough. Tiger's the one. Yeah, Tiger's the one. Guy. He's he's okay. the one. You know, I I would love to see Rory, um, you know, get hot and, and have a chance to win. But, you know, you, it's Tiger. It's What's Tiger. amazing about Tiger, how old are you? I'm 24 now. 24. So 24. Tiger's 46 so I think he's Something 46. Like, yeah, yeah, he is actually. Yeah, we'll go off what you said. Okay, he's 46, yeah. and, you, and 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 then that's your golf idol. What about the bazillion golfers between Tiger it's and crazy. you? Why is it Tiger? He just did so much for the game. Yeah. Like I think that everybody my age and even you know five, ten years above me, you know, a big part of the reason they're playing the game is because of Tiger's impact. You know, he came on and golf wasn't really that cool, and he came on this right. you know new build, this you know athletic big guy. And was just sending drives, you know, yeah. 300, 350 yards, which was unheard of back then. And, you know, he just he made it cool. And I think that, you know, the game has just benefited tremendously from him. 
The first time and only time I ever interviewed Tiger was after he won his first tour event, which was in Vegas. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was like 97 uh -huh. or 96. And he made golf cool in Vegas henceforth. It was a circus whenever the PGA came to town, if he was in the field. Yeah. And uh, he's been able to maintain that. When you're not cheering for your sport here on campus, what team are you pulling for? Volleyball, football. soccer, football? Football. Yep. That's where yep. it's at? I, yeah, I'm a big football fan. I've got a bunch of buddies from high school on the team, and I, you know, just love watching them play and, you know, try to get the respect that they deserve. So I love it. All right, Carson. We wish you the best at the Western Intercollegiate. Live on the Golf Channel, we'll be looking for you and your teammates. Best of luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good to have you here. All right, coming up, do you think BYU will be a top 25 over the next three years? Your response is coming up. That talk about that offense and an ESPN report projecting the Cougars number 14 over the next three years. And our rise and shite, shout, shout outs coming up. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason, because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. As the days grow brighter, so can your life. With stories of faith, love, renewal, and hope, it's about sharing the light of Christ and being the vessel for God's love. The BYU TV app offers a deep library of shows to lift and inspire. Simply download it and start streaming for free. Share the gift of BYU TV with family and friends this Easter season. Sometimes life is a mystery. Sometimes it's an adventure. And even when things don't go as planned, we can still have hope. We can still be brave. We can still show kindness. And even find a little bit of magic. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Hit the ball on that pylon, it's a touchdown. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast and don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Our question of the day, what do you see from BYU's offense that makes you confident that the Cougars will be a top 25 offensive unit over the next three years? Our first response, or among our many responses today, Thomas Gordon on Twitter, literally every part of that offense is stellar. Every position's loaded currently with some quality backups that are only going to get better over the next couple of years to keep the offense strong. Clyde Livingston on Twitter. Coach Roderick gives me a good reason to believe the offense can keep it going with the lineup of QBs following Hall. And so continue to log on, tweet, reach out to us, give us your opinions as, uh, as we tackle that topic today. Our elite voice of the day now presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Tyler Peterson on Twitter. I think Jaron is giving us the right momentum, and he'll stay for the first year of the Big 12 to drive his draft stock up. That would be a development. We think he might not be here for the Big 12. He could be because he's got two years of eligibility. Let's see how this season goes. Uh, he wants a job in the NFL, and so play well against that good schedule and then see what is out in front. But right. in theory, he could come back and for once, another And once year. again, I think it goes back to staying healthy. He has to stay healthy to be able to put himself in a position to move beyond BYU, but also to be successful this next year for BYU. I think so, and I, I think uh, and the backups behind him, they love. Uh, they made a play for Jackson Dart because you have to whenever you have a chance to 
to bolster your roster in that kind of a way. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but I know Aaron Roderick's confident in uh, in Finnegan and Conover, and uh, and they're out recruiting others. You know, it's it's uh, it's a long time between uh, now and and two seasons from now. Uh, but if Hall were to come back for his senior year, that would be that would be something. A huge plus. If, if uh, Pukunakua came back for his senior year, that would be something. Um, but with this schedule, and if BYU is successful, I think we're going to see more people at Pro Day, uh, maybe in the history of the school. Because there's a lot of talent on this team, and we'll have linemen, too, that are looking for jobs, and, and, uh, and everyone's getting older. So if you can get in younger, that's what you do. It affects the recruiting. You Look at what Zach Wilson was able to do and go number two overall. Recruits take note of that. They want to go to a program where they have that opportunity and that chance. And Zach Wilson was a kid out of high school that, frankly, he got overlooked, in yep. my opinion. Mm-hmm. Boise State was his best option until BYU came into the mix late. For him to go from here into the number two spot and now with the Jets, like that's where yeah. recruits and then are that, going. That little category just to the side that says $35 million, that's also yeah. very yeah. attractive to someone who wants to do that. All right, our Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, official credit union of BYU Athletics, put another one on the board for the Cougarettes as they won their 21st national championship today in the jazz dance category. They compete in the hip-hop prelims later today, so they got a chance at another one. But here are the national champions once again, 21 times. That's This is, you want a, the most dominant program on campus in any facet of campus life, you were looking at them right this here. This happened 90 minutes ago, Dave. 90 minutes ago, as you mentioned, the most dominant on campus right now. Congratulations to the Cougarettes. And that's why whenever there's a timeout and the Cougarettes take the field, whether at the football stadium or the Marriott Center, um, everyone stops. My and daughter's they watch. favorite moment yeah. is those Cougarettes, those cheerleaders. Loves it. National champs. Hey, Barry Trammell, who's still uh, Roman Provo. Uh, from the Oklahoman, uh, a longtime uh, supportive voice for BYU football getting into the Big 12. So he's here for a couple of more days. Uh, if you see him, he's got an Oklahoma accent and he wears Can't glasses. That's our description. Uh, and plus, we had him on this show. Um, get up and say hello to him. A very charming guy, a very good writer. And uh, let's be honest, his push for BYU in the Big 12. Help me while you get in the Big 12. Absolutely. And, and it was beyond that. I just think he's going to continue to push Utah, as we as you mentioned, Provo, and sell Provo and fans coming to support their teams here. And he's a driving force that's really going to help not only the Big 12, he's helped the Big 12, but BYU. Softball on BYU TV later today, a doubleheader. Men's baseball tonight on the BYU TV app as uh, Miller Park, Larry Miller Field, Gail Miller Field will both be hopping on this Friday night. All right, thanks to our guest today, Barry Trammell of the Oklahoman and Carson Lundell of the men's golf team. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Kristen, I'm Dave. A shout-out, Steve Craig. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Have a great weekend. Go Cougs.